The Maybach brand is a household name for lovers of elite luxury cars, especially since the revival by Mercedes-Benz. But what are the origins of the Maybach legend? We have found a rare example from the brand's heyday, a Maybach Zeppelin with prominent previous owners and a very checkered past. According to our latest information, the Baron von Neurath drove it, and after that, von Ribbentrop. It's said that this car carried the premieres at the Munich conference. Then it belonged to an American general in Paris. That's been proven. I once met the chauffeur who drove it for him, and then the engine froze out. It was stood somewhere in a frost without antifreeze, and then the Americans left it in Ravensburg in the motor pool. An art dealer bought it and in doing so saved it from being scrapped. A car like a Wagnerian opera, big, heavy, and completely lacking in modesty. A state car, and of course, a one of a kind. Built by Spohn in Ravensburg around 1933. At the service of all those who were involved in negotiations about the world and its destiny. Maybach actually built airship engines, hence the name Zeppelin. But after the First World War, Germany was banned from building further aircraft, from then on, brilliant inventor Maybach and his son Karl built cars. Their technical standards were on the level of Rolls-Royce. People simply wanted the best, so every one of the rare Maybach cars became a custom-made item. The bodywork was repaired, not restored, by Wendler in Reutlingen. They previously built Maybach bodies, and there were still old workers and one foreman who worked on Maybachs in their youth. And they contributed a great deal to the fact that the car is practically in original condition, with all the old parts preserved. The upholstery is still totally original, with the exception of the seating surface of the passenger seat. The top is new, but apart from that, everything is as it was in the year 1934, 35, 33. The comfort on the back seat is like in a very modern car, even somewhat better, as you have more space. In the driver's seat, comfort is minimal because it's very tight. Obviously, they were much slimmer back then, and perhaps shorter too. Und vielleicht auch kleiner. Under the massive dark bonnet hides the heart of the car. The engine, called DS8, is a double six cylinder with a huge eight liter capacity. When you start the engine, you think more of an airship than a car. Then we searched for an engine for two years, and we finally found the engine in Luxembourg with the operator of a go-kart track, literally in a hen house. Evidence of the hens was really still visible. I can still remember very clearly I was there with a torch looking for the engine number and came out beaming with joy and said, it fits. Huge 200 horsepower are pushed to the rear axle by the 12 cylinder. Its torque is immense and its performance is impressive. The brakes and chassis, however, are a rather conservative construction. Four hydraulic drum brakes don't make themselves felt very strongly with an unloaded weight of three and a half ton. There's always the rumor that you need a heavy goods vehicle license to drive it. That's not true, but it drives like one. It has an 18-meter turning circle and no power steering. Afterwards, if the driver has been driving it for a long time, he has the right to a good, hearty meal. Maybach cars are one of a kinds. None is the same as another. Their price has retained its value even today. 
It's on a par with a nice detached house in a good location. The brand's elite image has not faded. Maybach fans are an insular community with no nouveau riche affectations. A Maybach is something special, not something you find everywhere. But it's not a car for showing off in, it's a car for connoisseurs. Perhaps 2,400 Maybach cars were built between 1924 and 1941. Every one of them was a testament to Wilhelm Maybach. The brilliant designer helped bring success to Daimler, but would have long disappeared into oblivion if his name hadn't found its way onto a massive bonnet.